Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Let's talk about the Articles of Confederation, which was uh, approved in 1777 right after we declared independence. It was our first constitution. It was our first agreement to work together as states, which considered themselves like independent nations. But a, a confederation is an agreement uh, to work together. So these are our learning objectives. We're going to talk about some of the weaknesses of the American government under these Articles of Confederation, some political, economic, and internal ones. Uh, but one thing that the uh, Articles did, it was able to organize Western lands, the Northwest Ordinance of 1787. is a really good example of that. And then we're going to talk about Shays' Rebellion and had, how that really proved to everybody that the Articles, Articles of Confederation, which were about nine years old at that point, weren't going to work. They had to do something else. And then we're going to identify the path that eventually led to the Constitutional Convention, and the development of our Constitution, which will be our next lesson. So, here are some of the problems for the United States. Uh, the government was very weak. Uh, it couldn't meet its own agreements with France and Spain. It couldn't interact with the states. It couldn't tell the states what to do. It was basically a government in name only. It was very weak. And foreign governments like France, Spain, and even Britain believed that pretty soon... The whole country would just fall apart into 13 separate countries, and they, they could come over and just piecemeal attack and reconquer lands that they had lost. Plus, they had no way to finance their war debt. Uh, does that sound familiar? Like after Britain, after the French and Indian War? So these Articles of Confederation, I want you to write these down in your notes there. It was a legal friendship. It, it was approved by the Continental Congress in November of 1777. Notice that's about a year and a half-ish, almost a year and a half, since we declared independence. So about a year and a half, we didn't really have a government to kind of run all the 13 colonies. But it was made very weak and not very strong because the states were very fearful, and they feared a very powerful government like Britain had, the British Parliament and the British King. So one, some of the problems with the Articles of Confederation government, Congress cannot raise money through taxes or regulate trade. They're on their own. They, have, they can ask for money from the states, and they can't regulate who does what trade. And there were some arguments between Virginia and um, Maryland over who could use the Potomac River. The sovereignty or the power resided with the states. The states didn't give up any power. They they could say at any time, nope, I'm North Carolina, I'm Virginia, I'm not going to do what you say. They had a unicameral government, much like England, where they only had one house. And they had no executive, which means they had no president. They had no federal court system or Supreme Court to take a look at if two states had a problem. They couldn't go to anybody to resolve it. Each state had one vote regardless of size or population. So imagine if you're a large state like Virginia, say with a million people, you get the same vote as Rhode Island with 10,000 people. Uh, did you think Virginia really liked that idea? The large states didn't like that idea, and the small states loved it. And any time you wanted to do something, it took nine colonies out of 13 uh, to approve it. And that's a lot because the very different colonies had very different ideas on what they wanted to do. And if you wanted to amend the Articles of Confederation, all 13 had to agree. And finally, they had no uniform currency or money. Today, the same dollar is everywhere. But back then, each state had their own money. And not every state took it. And they could not raise a standing army in case some military action was needed against a foreign power or even internal. And all that resulted in the big idea, which was it was a weak national government. Absolutely weak. Some economic problems, we're going to run through these. The paper money was worthless. Uh, foreign merchants wanted gold or silver in payment. And the precious metal supply was drying up. It means it was going away. So pretty soon they would run out of gold and silver and couldn't pay their bills because nobody wanted their money. It didn't mean anything. Britain was blockading um, ports, and they were preventing trade with the colonies. So if you remember, back to the old triangle trade, you had gold, ivory, and spices coming out of here, guns, cloth, and beer going down here, and trade coming back to the colonies through the 
Caribbean islands. Well, Britain cut all of that off. They weren't buying anything from here, much like was it John, somebody predicted in one of the Loyalist papers that we read in class. So all this molasses, sugar, uh, slaves, everything was cut off for a long time. You couldn't get anything from any other British territories. Westerners, people who lived out west, now they can go past that, that the Appalachian Mountains, right? The proclamation of 1763 no longer applies. Some of them wanted to be independent. There was an area around Franklin, which is Franklin, North Carolina, which is right here now. They wanted to be independent, have their own state called Franklin. Uh, if you look at the next chart, whoop, different states had different claims. You, you know, they, the original charter was each state could go all the way out to the to the uh, west, to the west coast. We well, see Georgia claims in here, North Carolina, South Carolina claim in here. This was uh, ceded by Massachusetts, but this was claimed by Mass. This was New York, but was claimed by Massachusetts. Uh, this was later sold to Pennsylvania. Uh, what they claimed, because that was a straight line out there. This was claimed by Connecticut. Uh, so. All these different problems, much like in the French and India War, where different states and different countries uh, claim different the same area, but the states didn't go to war over it, but they knew something had to happen. But one of the things it was able to do was divide the Western lands. It was able to, to help states solve all these problems, and this new area out here, it, it was able to... Divide that up. So let's talk about that. The population in this Northwest Territory, the Ohio River Valley, what's today Wisconsin, Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio, and Michigan, and parts of Minnesota, the population went from 2,000 to 100,000 in the span of just 10 years because people could flood out there now. It was all open to them. They could go out there and make their fortune, be a farmer, or be peaceful. So the Land Ordinance of 1785 said it's established a method for settling the area out here, the North Ohio River. Land was put in six mile squares. Townships, uh, an equal a township would equal 36 sections of one mile square. You had to buy the whole section though. You could just buy part of it, and you you could sell everything, sell it to smaller areas later on. And then in 1787. Everything out here in black was divided into no. They made a, a law where you could make no more than five states, but no fewer than three. They wound up being three. And this was a six later. That we got the Louisiana Purchase, who bought all this land west of the Mississippi. And you can see when all these states were eventually added to the uh, Union. So when a territory wanted to become a state, there was a recipe for making a new state. Statehood could come about in three stages. Number one, you had to have 5,000 adult male land, landowners. Then it became a territory. When the population reached, reached 60,000, then it could become a state. And then this area would have no slaves and had to offer free education. So if you look at some of the states out there, look at a lot of the land, look at a lot of the uh, counties and how they're square, straight lines. Unless there's maybe a river, like there's a river running through here, or maybe along in here, there's a river. So, you know, this is Michigan here. Look how straight they are. So they're all very straight. Unless there's a river, this was the state here, and that's that's from the Northwest Ordinance Act of uh, 1787 that laid out how all the different things were and you can see a lot of the names of like Isabella, Clinton, Livingston, they're named after the people who may have settled in there. So with the only thing working being the land and everything else in the Articles of Confederation not working, uh, Alexander Hamilton and a few others called a meeting at Mount Vernon because of disagreements over who could use the Potomac River and the issue of taxes. Because what was happening is a boat would come into Maryland or into the into the Potomac River, go to Maryland, they would have to pay tax. They'd come over to Virginia to stop and see Alexandria, had to pay tax. They'd go up to say Annapolis and had to pay tax. Every time they would cross the state boundary, they had to repay tax, which is very expensive. So they met at Mount Vernon, which is where George Washington lived. Both Maryland and Virginia representatives met in '75. 
and they had, and they finally agreed that Virginia had a right to use for 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 free use of the Potomac. Uh, but James Madison calls for a convention to meet out of the states to meet in Annapolis to work out other trade problems between the states. So this is really the first thing to kind of get the states to work together. In Annapolis, they met in September of of 86. Only five states attended out of 13. So they talked about things, and that's the Annapolis state capital where they met. And they eventually requested that Congress call for a convention of the states to solve the problems that were in the Articles of Confederation. So to bring all the states together and try to come up to some agreement. So now we're talking about Shea's Rebellion. And Daniel Shea was the leader. You see him up in here. Oops, there he is. He was a veteran of the Revolutionary War, so were a lot of the farmers out in, in western Massachusetts. And they had a problem. The farmers were going in debt because of the blockades and the, nobody was buying what they were growing. Uh, because the French cut off trade, they were going into debt. They couldn't pay their bills. So failure to pay their bills back to the bank meant that the bank took their property. That's just the way it works. It always has and always will. Uh, and then the men would have to go to prison where they couldn't work to pay off their bills. They just stayed in prison. Problem is the government needed the money to pay their war debts and refused to cut the taxes. Does that sound like uh, the Great Britain government? Uh, after the French Indian War, they kept raising taxes on the uh, colonists. So Shea and the other guys say, hey, we just fought this war about tyranny of a government and how they're oppressing their people and that we've got the right to overthrow it. So he came up with the idea to overthrow the government. So he went to go march on the Massachusetts government. Uh, they closed all the doors, all the courts, so nobody could do anything. Uh, you can see in here they're, they're beating up a... Uh, a government official here. The farmers got organized. They marched on the state arsenal to try to get more guns, uh, but they were defeated by the Massachusetts state militia, and uh, it broke up and the, re and re and the rebellion ended. Uh, it collapsed, but a lot of the wealthy Americans said, hey, you know, why didn't the government do something about this? We need to do something because the federal government can't draw up a military. It's only the states. And this could happen anywhere because we've got a lot of people who are going to go unemployed uh, or can't sell their wares to make money. We've got a problem here. So it proved to a lot of people that the articles were not working. And they called for a convention in Philadelphia, which means that same year, for the one that was called because the Annapolis Convention. They said we need to meet about this. This gave more support to that. So they called for this meeting for the sole purpose of revising the Articles of Confederation. They're not going to rename it. They're just going to revise the Articles of Confederation, come up with new ways to make these problems that they're having work better. So here's the timeline. Uh, going all the way back to 1776, the Declaration of Independence. We have the war in there. I just didn't put it on here. The Articles of Confederation and Perpetual Union, which is the official name, were approved in 77. Treaty of Paris with uh, Great Britain gave us our independence in 83. The Northwest Land Ordinance, we talked about two of those. March of 75, you had the Mount Vernon Conference between Virginia and Maryland. Talked about the use of the Potomac. Then they called for another one in September of 86 in Annapolis for all the colonies, but only five showed up. Then you had Shays Rebellion starting in August. And people were starting to get really concerned uh, about what's going on and why the federal government can't do something. Meanwhile, they have the Northwest Ordinance that talks about how to become a state. And then they call for this federal convention, and they meet May through September of 87. To uh, It later becomes the Constitutional Convention, because that's where they wrote the Constitution. That's going to be our next class. So in summary, the early founders were very fearful of a strong central government, so they created a, strong, a weak central government through the Articles of Confederation. They didn't realize how bad it was until it really went into effect. A lot of things couldn't tax, didn't have money. Hard to get votes. Population wasn't, you know, representation wasn't correct. And then Shays' Rebellion was kind of the last straw that gave people purpose for the convention. And uh, with that, there was an agreement of the states to revise the Articles of Confederation. And that'll be our next block where we talk about the uh, Constitutional Convention. So with that, we will talk at you later. Study your notes and enjoy.